right. So for this project, we want to just talk about the supplies that you are going to need. You want uh, your tape measure or a ruler, whichever one is more comfortable to you. You always want to have a seam ripper close by just for any mistakes you might need to undo. Your fabric pencil, your scissors, your fabric, which is going to be nine and a half inches wide, six and a half inches this way. Straight pins. You want to make sure that you have your three-fourths inch wide, 18 inch long strip. This is going to be for your straps. I have a second one over here and I'm just going to show you how you can kind of do it differently if you don't want to work with a piece of fabric that is this narrow. This piece is two inches uh, wide, also 18 inches long, but you want four 18 inch long pieces. This is bias tape. This is an option, not a necessity. It's a strap option. This is just the package that bias tape comes in. Um, a lot of people find it stashed in their basement from people that maybe used to sew and don't know what to do with it. Um, but if you have some laying around, this is a good time to use it up. Another strap option is going to be just ribbon. And another one is shoelaces, if you have shoelaces laying around. All right, so the first part that we're gonna start with is your bias tape or your straps. Um, this is the actual size that they tell you to use, which is three quarters of an inch. This is really, really narrow to me. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on a wider piece, which is actually two inches wide. Um, really the width of your straps, honestly, is just a matter of preference. Um, doing it on this narrow piece, of course, it can be done, but um, like I said, it's a little tedious and, you know, we just want to be able to make it easy for sewers of all levels, basically. So, um, and you'll be able to see a little better uh, what has to happen here. So what you're going to do is right up at the front end, you're going to just fold it about to the middle. You can just use your fingers and press down really hard and it'll kind of crease it. Kind of do the same thing with the other side and bring it to the middle. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit or does not. You're going to fold this one more time in half. Okay, and then if you have water in your iron or steam in your iron or a spray bottle, this is the best time for that. And you really want to use just the nose of your iron to press that down. Now, one thing you can do is after you've gotten it started, you can just kind of pull. And when you pull it, it'll start to kind of fold on its own which makes it a little easier to keep going. Okay, that's the two inches wide, all right? Um, basically, you're gonna do the same thing that we just did on two inches with this one. Now, as you can see, this is so much more narrow, so it is a little harder. But same thing, you're gonna fold it to the middle, crease it down. If this does not feel good to you and feels too tedious, make the strap wider. One thing you don't wanna be doing is feeling discouraged so whatever is gonna make it just more comfortable for you. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing again. Remember, use the nose of your iron to get it going. Give it a pull. And then just roll as you go. If you once you get it started here, you can even continue to do this on the sewing machine. You don't have to press the whole thing out um, all the way down on your board. And I can show you how. So 
So these are both sets of straps. These are our three quarters. These are our two inches. Um, again, you can kind of see really just a matter of preference. Um, but we're going to use both sets. So we will use the wider straps for the top part of the mask and we'll use the narrow ones for the bottom part of the mask. Okay. All right, so one of the things that we want to mark is our opening, um, the part that we are not going to stitch closed, and that's so that you can uh, flip it in, in right side, inside out. Um, we're going to do the instructions say to do it for, I think, an inch and a half, but we're going to make ours wider. We're going to go, um, I'm going to suggest two to three inches because it was really difficult to open. So. Again, you decide what makes you comfortable, but I am making mine a little wider. And honestly, it might make it a little bit wider. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start putting our straps in here. Now it tells you to um, pin them on that the top layer of the fabric. <coughs> And then put your other layer on top, but we're going to do it just a little bit, uh, a little bit differently because what happens is the fabric starts to shift. Even once you've pinned down the corner and it did not go well. All right, so I've kind of been rolling up these straps um, before I pin them down just to keep them from um, getting kind of crazy inside here. You can also uh, probably pin them together if you wanted to or use a rubber band just to kind of keep them together. If they start sliding and moving around, um, it becomes a real problem. All right, so we got um, our piece sandwiched together, okay, all pinned down all the way around. Let me take that out. That was just a hold. Um, I think it's helpful if you leave a little tail out on the corners with your um, straps. And so now we're going to start um, going all the way around, making sure not to sew this opening closed. Um, if you have a reverse button on your machine, it's always good to start and just give it a little reverse back first, uh, just to kind of reinforce that section. Don't stitch over your pins. Make sure you're taking them out as you go. As you want to just trim your corners. If you want to cut it a little closer, you can. Not a big deal. And then some people like to clip. Again, a matter of preference, right? All right, and then we're going to just give it a little pressing really quick around the edges because sometimes that does help it. We got our steam on. It does help with turning it right side in. Just pulling your straps out to kind of help you. So we're going to just press it down lightly one more time, and then we're going to start our pleating. And then we're going to top stitch. Then we're done. All right. 
so just like you would fold like um, an accordion fan or a fan, you're just going to kind of grab, pinch. Again, your fingers are sufficient tools. And since your fabric is still warm, this really is like the best time to, to crease it. And do the same thing one more time. All right. This just allows for the mask to conform to your face. Uh, we're going to go through now and give it our top stitching, which is going to secure these pleats in place too. And that's your final step. And we're done. So we're going to top stitch this down. I'm kind of breaking the rules and sewing on the opposite side of my um, pins. I'm doing a half an inch. We're going to do a double uh, top stitch and then come out a little further. But the reason I'm going this way is when the pleats are on the bottom, Sometimes they will um, fold and get all weird. So we're going to go this direction so that we can make sure that they stay down. Um, I have two pins here just to mark where that opening is so that I make sure that I do get that um, stitch down when I come back around. And I'm actually just going to keep going past that instead of ending that stitch there. And I'm just going to position it so that the edge of my foot is right along the, the outside of the mask. All right, so this is the inside, and you can see how much that allows for that expansion to kind of fit the face. Um, and then here's your outside. And I went around it a second time. Um, I think the instructions call for like a double, a double stitch. So there you go. So this mannequin head is a little small. So it is kind of swallowing up her face a little bit. But you can see how those uh, pleats allow it to expand. And then I'll just uh, take another shot so that you can see how it looks um, just flat as well. Um, as you can see, these straps are long. Um, so again, you decide how long you, you want them. You might want to shorten them.